the recommended site is and that we take a poll, a poll does the community support the selection and so part of this evening is for you to hear a presentation around how the committee got to uh, the current site and then answer any questions you may have and then we will do a raise of hands we do need to do a count of that uh, to put in our report so want to make sure you knew what the process was this evening and so I do want the building committee reps that we have several here tonight if they could stand and, and be recognized they've been working for over a year on your behalf of uh, uh, the community so maybe we can give them a hand for their hard work so this has been quite the process and a lot of it had to remain confidential due to landowners and negotiations and, and things like that so um, you know I know it felt like for a lot of people we don't have a lot of information so as soon as we had information we made sure we tried to get that out to our community so I'm going to turn over the presentation to Harriman, uh, who is our architect firm working on the project. And this is Lisa Salwin and Mark Lee, and they're going to share the presentation with you. So welcome back. Thank you very much, Katie. Thank you again for everyone coming out tonight. Uh, and uh, we've got a relatively cool environment, which is really, really nice to present this information. We won't keep you too, too long. This is a presentation that's really going to cover the site. As, as Katie said, it's really about the site selection. And, uh, and that's an important first step. Uh, to that end, we haven't, we haven't really gotten into the building design yet. So that's something that is gonna happen in a, in a short while. Uh, and we'll have more opportunity for presentations and input from the public as we get into the building design itself. So I know there may be a lot of questions about what the building might have in it, but tonight it's really to cover how did we arrive at the chosen site and, and most of you I think are aware that the chosen site is to put it where the, on the site of the existing uh, high school. And so that's, that's a, sort of our, our presentation tonight. We have uh, a few boards up here, and I, I, made the, uh, present, or I made the announcement earlier that if you're interested in seeing some close-ups, because it, it's going to be little graphics on the screen here, but if you really want to see them in close-up, you can come up to the boards after. We're going to hang around after the, the presentation and vote uh, and, uh, and be available to answer any questions. If you have questions in general about the project that aren't necessarily about the site selection, we, we, if we can answer it, we'll, we'll answer it as best we can. We'll also have a pad here, so if you're interested in writing something down, if we don't get a chance to talk to you, please record your questions on the pad of paper right, right over here, uh, and, and we'll also write things down as well. We really want this whole process of, of designing uh, the school to really be focused on the community, that, that the community has had an important say in, uh, in really what this project is all about, because it really is a community resource, not just a high school for Auburn. With that, Lisa and I are going to do the best we can to, to narrate through uh, this uh, slide right here, and of course you can't see any of the text, but uh, it represents all the steps that the State Department of Education requires that the uh, City of Auburn go through to get the new school. So it starts with the application for the school itself, uh, and then you have to hire the architect, and then the architect starts to look at, is the existing building uh, good enough, or, or should, you, should you renovate the, new, the existing building, or should you build new? And we did that analysis, and it turned out that, uh, that the state supported our recommendation for a new school. So, uh, so the first uh, step we had to do was evaluate that, that uh, uh, the condition of the existing building. So, so it will be a new school. No part of the existing building will be saved. Somebody I was talking to earlier said, are, are you saving anything? I said, no, unless there's something you really dearly want. So, so let us know if there's a part of it that, that really you like have to have. The bell tower has come up. The, yeah. the bell tower, exactly. So that, that we don't think of that as part of the building. But yeah, we're going to save the bell tower. There's other, some other things that have been gifts of classes. And we're, we're going to make sure that we're careful about those as well. So, uh, so that, that, again, part was, was done. Uh, we had to uh, work with the state through that, and now uh, we had them to look at the site selection itself, and and we're right somewhere. Actually, we have a blow up, I think. Uh, so site approval, which is is uh, slated to happen in the next. Uh, we actually have a meeting uh, the uh, Friday of this week, and then there's another formal step next week. So the formal approval uh, by the state will happen of the site itself will happen uh, next week, and so. That is kind of the, the first part. Then we really start getting into the design of the concept of the building itself. What is the building going to look like? What's going to go in the building? What parts of the state 
is going to support in terms of the funding for it? What parts does the community say we're interested in having a little more than what the state will fund if there's anything that the community wants more than what the state will fund? And so we'll have those discussions as the, that process goes on. So the design of the school itself will happen in this time. We only design it to what we call a concept level. And that is that we don't do full detailed drawings because uh, we have to prepare it for the uh, approval of the state to put it to a referendum. So, so the community then will vote on the design of the school itself. And so we'll have, have uh, more public information sessions regarding what that design is uh, as we get up to that. It's not certain when that is yet. It, some of it is dependent on how long it takes us to get through the next few steps. Some of it's dependent on the state and, and their pace. And so, again, keep your eyes and ears open. And, and I know the, the newspaper is a great place. The other great place to get information about the project is on the school department's website. And so there's a tab for the new high school. Uh, and please check that out if you're at all interested in what's going on. We put all of our minutes uh, there, where our agendas and minutes uh, are put there. There's other information. And the other thing that we invite everyone to is, is the uh, building committee meetings are open to the public. Uh, and, and as Katie said, there hasn't been a lot of exciting stuff happening because it's all been about the land acquisition. Uh, and so that was some sensitive negotiations potentially involved in that. But, but really, uh, people are invited. They're at the uh, City Hall. And again, you can find the Times post on the school department's website on the school construction uh, portion of that. Lisa, did I forget anything on the schedule? <coughs> Katie's really good about updating Facebook also. So there's a lot of great information on Facebook about that. And then, great. Um, just to, to clarify, tonight is the straw poll. It's a non-binding um, show of support that you are supporting the recommended site. So then when we go to the DOE, they understand that the community is supporting this site before they have the state uh, approve it. Good. Good, good, good. So the step, the, the process that we went through to find the uh, site uh, was really a seven step process. And it really began with looking at the state criteria. So the Department of Education has a defined list of, of things that they are looking for uh, in rating the site or a site. Uh, and that was the first thing. The, the next thing we did was we worked with the City of Auburn and their extensive collection of uh, information that they have in their uh, database of, of uh, the uh, uh, properties throughout the city. And so we collectively we looked at that, we analyzed that. Uh, specifically, we were looking at sites that were large enough to support the school itself. And so we really had three different things we were looking at. One, could we find a site uh, that could support uh, the entire program of a new school and all the fields on it? Another thing we looked at is, well, if we, if we kept some portion of the program on the existing site, uh, then could, for instance, if the building were on the existing site, could we find a location for all the fields? And that was, a, again, it's something that the state asked us to look at. So it would be having a split site of the school in one and some fields, but some fields off site. And then the third thing was looking at what if the school went off site and some existing field stayed on the existing high school site. So those were sort of three scenarios. We looked at that properties that were 42 acres and above, and then we looked at properties that were 20 uh, acres to 40 acres, and so to, to look at if, if we, we were to split those things. Then we had a community-wide forum, and we asked people to come together uh, and uh, share with us their ideas about where a school should, should go. Uh, and from that, then we started to hone in on a short list of potential locations. And then from that information, we shared it with the state, got their feedback, we get, went to a more detailed analysis of each of the sites, uh, and, and we'll share a little bit of that. And then that got it down to two sites, and then ultimately down to a single site. Uh, so we, we initially looked at 54 different sites throughout the city, that's where we, we started. Uh, and then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 47 sites throughout the city. There are 54 of the number of meetings that we had to review uh, these sites. We initially get it down to, to uh, five sites that, that most closely aligned with the state criteria and the community criteria uh, of what the community said in their public forum they were looking for in a new school site. We then toured those sites uh, with the building committee uh, and then we removed a number of those sites. Three of them were removed because of cost or uh, other constraints related to development of the site get down to two that had to wait until the spring. The uh, 
Department of uh, Environmental Protection requirements re require us to look at the site in the spring to look for vernal pools. So they're sensitive habitat that can only be evaluated in April and May. And so you really have to wait until that uh, comes along. And, and one of the sites that we looked at that was a promising site had actually some significant vernal pools on it. And that we looked at the cost and we talked to the Army Corps of Engineers and the, the Department of, of Environmental Protection, DP, and they said, you really have, a, have to convince us that this is the best site. Uh, and when we evaluated that site versus the existing site, we, had, we, we couldn't make that argument that the alternative site was actually uh, higher rated. And so, um, so in, in that case, we really looked hard at the existing site uh, and came up with uh, a recommendation to stay with that. So the different criteria that we looked at, this is now looking at the city of Auburn, north is Lake Auburn, Taylor Pond, and so you can sort of see the shape of, of Auburn, and then the downtown area is right here. That, there's a little yellow square, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the existing site. And so in terms of a central location, the existing site was, was perfect. We went to the city of Auburn, the economic development director, and we said, where would you think the best location for the high school would be? He said, right where it is. And so uh, in many ways, that really represents a great central location in the community. It's close to many, many things. And so when we look at the parcel structure, we look at site conditions, and, they, and there are both, I think, uh, many criteria under each of these, but transit, location to public transportation, utilities, aspects of the community, community resources, the cost to develop it, and then, as we said, community-defined features. Here's the big list of all of those uh, in, in, in further detail, but uh, one of the things we did when we had the public forum is we said, okay, here's, here's sort of a map of the community, and if this is the central location where the population density is, we asked people in the community, where do they think the right location is? And, and we said, you know, think of me about trying to uh, keep it close enough to the population density in the center of the community. So these rings represent a mile, this first one is a mile from the center of the uh, Auburn, then two miles, three miles, four miles. And so in thinking about bus routes and thinking about proximity to all the other uh, resources in the community, uh, what we heard loud and clear from, from folks is really, it should be essentially uh, located. So um, in addition to the state criteria, the uh, community identified really three most, most important areas. And so, so the second one I addressed is sort of the community prox proximity to population density. Uh, we heard loud and clear that was an important aspect. One of the aspects we also heard was the ability to have all fields on the one site. Auburn has had to live with fields that have been distributed all over the city for many, many years. And so it was really, really important that if we could keep all of those onto uh, the school site, that that was a really important aspect of it. And then uh, there was sort of the idea that this new school embodied more than simply just a new school, that it really embodied an opportunity to act as an economic draw and a sense of pride for the community. And so that was kind of heard loud and clear. And so thinking about where it goes and what it represents as a community resource was an important part of that. Lisa, have I forgotten anything on, on any of that? I don't think so on the community criteria, no. So after the community forum, this represents right here, you, you, it's hard to see, but you'll see these little blocks of gray. This is all of the parcels between 20 and 42 acres, and, and then the deep, darker dots mean that there were three or more significant issues with respect to the, the site criteria. So, so we again evaluated, those were the parcels between 20 and 42, and then the parcels that were uh, greater than 42 acres. And 42 is a magic number because it's a, it's sort of a, a, a threshold that the state looks at in building a 1,200 student high school. So they say, okay, you need uh, 30 acres plus an acre for every 100 students. And so that equates to 42 acres, and that's sort of what established the 42 acres. So all these were 42 and above. And you can see that a lot of the larger parcels were in the southern area or the northern area of the city and, and largely in agricultural zones uh, and so there aren't a lot obviously developed in the more urbanized or built up area of the uh, of the city and so but but there were a number that we began to look at uh, like I said there were, there were a short list of five and so you can also see that the ones that are the darker colors are the ones that had more significant issues and the lighter grays are ones that had less significant issues 
So as I said, we've got it down to two and then down to one. And what we had to do with the existing site was look at the opportunity to, as we heard, get as many of the resources onto the site as we could. So we went and looked at well, what if we organize things very differently than they are now and uh, came up with, and this is, I want to sort of let everyone know, this is not set in stone, this, this plan here. It may change, will change somewhat uh, between now and when we complete the final design. However, this is sort of a test fit to get all the pieces on here that we could. Uh, what's not shown are tennis courts. And so what we were able to get on were a baseball field, a softball field, field hockey. We have track in a slightly shifted location and a field inside of it. So thinking about taking the football uh, program from Walton, bringing it onto the site, uh, and then track and field, and then the cross field, and then some practice field. And so we were able to get a lot on here. It's going to require leveling the site, and, and, and there's a significant amount of work that's required to do that. But we feel very comfortable that we can get the new school and these sites onto the, the existing uh, parcel. The only thing to add is we paid a lot of attention to the phasing. You can imagine we need to keep the existing school up and running while this is happening. So a lot of the location for the new school is driven on keeping the existing school operational until the new school is ready and for the students to occupy. We had a, uh, a public announcement regarding the uh, chosen site, and, uh, and again, we, we've been all the time that we're uh, doing this entire search process, we're uh, constantly working back and forth with the Department of Education. So, uh, so we, had, uh, we had a big public announcement after they were comfortable with, with moving forward with this, uh, and, uh, and our slogan, our future is here. So that, that is still very much part of uh, the project itself. So, and so that brings us to this formal step tonight. Uh, and so the formal step is really to gauge the public support for building on the existing high school site. Uh, and so in a, in a few minutes, we'll, we'll take that, and it's going to be a show of hands of the citizens of, of Auburn. You have to be a citizen of Auburn. You can certainly show support for the school if you're not a citizen of Auburn, but the, the uh, straw poll has to count the, the folks that are uh, Auburn residents. So, so but that, uh, before we get to that, um, We'll, we'll take some questions if you have any. But the, the next step after tonight, uh, that this Friday we have the State uh, Department of Education School Construction Subcommittee. So they make recommendations to the State Board of Education. And so that happens this Friday. We're, we're fairly confident that we're on the agenda and, and it's only up to you folks tonight. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we're, uh, 